Welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. I just upgraded some gear. Today we're going to be looking at the Saw Shemag from Super Essie. So I just got this Shemag in the mail and I figured I'd open it up on camera. Now, a cotton bandana or a cotton Shemag of some type goes back to my core Pathfinder training. That was one of the 10 C's. That's something I started carrying with me all the time and I just never saw a reason to stop. So occasionally I'll still carry just a standard bandana like this. So a big upgrade over a standard cotton bandana is a regular Shemag. So just the size alone makes this really worth carrying if you've got the space. This has got kind of a coarse weave to it. So most of the time I actually use this as a towel more than anything else. This is something I've been carrying and I've got a lot of different colors and they seem to hold up pretty well, but I saw something recently and I thought that would be an upgrade. So I found this company, Super Essie, and they make a lot of EDC style gear that I'm into. So they actually take a standard bandana and I think they call it a survival hank. It's like a two piece arrangement that actually forms a pocket. This one uh, is a little bit different though. This actually has a ferrocerium rod built into it that I can start a fire with. I have a Kevlar saw and I've got uh, fire material in the fringe all the way around the exterior. In addition to the survival hanks and the shamag like this, they do paracord bracelets. They do a lot of EDC things such as survival patches and small items that you're actually going to have with you. Let's take a look at this thing. So here's our shamag. So this is 27 inches by about 11 inches. And you can see here I've got a ferrocerium rod for a button. And here's my Kevlar cordage. I teach wilderness survival, but I also teach urban survival. And one thing that I really appreciate is the gray man aspect of it. I do not want to stand out. I do not want to look like a military figure in any way. I do not want to look like an authority. I want to blend in. I want to look like a, just kind of a pissed off construction worker that you really don't want to screw with. And you just let him go about your way. Now, that's kind of the problem. These Shemags have definitely taken a military look since we started fighting in the deserts. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not me. That's not what I'm going for. And I think this kind of blends in a little bit better in nearly any situation. It's kind of got that blue-gray look to it. So for a link for this, if I was trying to just make a neck gaiter, I can pull up the hood on my Paca here and I can really batten the hatches down if there was a uh, like a dust storm or we have another pandemic I could certainly make a mask out of this at least a debris mask so it's plenty long for that but it's not overly large the uh, the Shemags are big but they are almost too big in a way it's great to have once you're at camp and once you have that giant size of the three by three traditional shamogs, but carrying those things is not always the easiest. So around the full outside perimeter, I've got this linen fringe. And in addition to looking cool and looking less tactical, in my opinion, this is pretty good for fire starting. I can trim this off. I can peel it. I can start unlayering this thing and I can make a fire in an emergency. Now I showed you the fair serum red button already. And this entire corner is actually a pocket. So I'm going to undo this button. And we see we've got kind of a sewn-in opening. So this is probably maybe two inches wide for the opening. And it's pretty darn deep. That's probably three inches deep. And the width on that is probably about five inches. So you've got this entire corner that you can stack gear. If I was more concerned with an urban situation, I could put water purification tablets. I could put a, uh, a plastic bag to carry water with. I could put uh, handcuff keys. I could put a set of lock picks. If this was more of a wilderness thing, I might go more with fire with this. I might put uh, a fire starting tab. I might put some stormproof matches. I could certainly put a fishing kit in here. But this is the saw part of the saw shamak. So let's see how much cordage we have here. So this is yellow Kevlar cordage and this is high vis and this is probably four and a half, five feet. So this is three ply cordage. So I could just break this down and use it like you would any other cordage. 
and I could recover that cordage. And because this is Kevlar, I can use this over and over again. I can definitely use this for self-defense, but I can use this for crafting as well. Uh, my first choice wouldn't be to wrap it around my hands and start pulling through something, although I certainly could. If I was in a urban setting, I would just grab a couple sticks off the ground or a couple pins or sharpies and make myself a couple hand toggles. If I had time and I was in more of a wilderness setting, I would craft either a buck or a bow saw out of this. And this is not going to cut a cord of firewood, but you are definitely going to be able to make fine enough cuts to craft items in the field. So in that bag, I also have a replacement hank of cordage. So this is that same Kevlar cordage, and this is five foot. So if I was to damage my cordage, either practicing skills or in an actual situation, I have a reload right here. I can certainly carry both hanks in that pocket without any problem. Let's try the ferro rod button out on the Super SE. So this is definitely an upgrade over the standard Shimog for me especially. I love the fact that I can EDC things in this pocket. Now I can take this Shimog and make, make a pack out of it. I've done that before. That's a great way to carry items. So you have all the standard uses of just a piece of cotton like this. I can repair my clothes. I can strain water. I can use this to carry items. I can use this for first aid. This pocket is a pretty big deal to me. Uh, I'm definitely going to probably load this up with some additional cordage. I'm going to put some small first aid items in here. I don't want to put anything too heavy and make this noticeable. I want to keep this pretty low key. I want to be able to just wear this around and really not draw any attention to myself. So if this is the kind of thing you like, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box, and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. So I'm going to make a short video on using that Kevlar saw and how quickly it cuts through things. So you can follow that on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram. That's also going to be uploaded to Facebook. Uh, but I can see this for several different people. If you have a lot of stuff and you're, you're a big gear guy and you carry a ton of things, this is something that's multifunctional. So instead of just having a Shimog or just having a cotton bandana, you upsize that. So that's always a good thing. If you're a minimalist and you try to get away with as little gear as possible, this takes something as small as a bandana and lets you make that more multifunctional. You know, I could put a first aid kit in here. I could put a water kit in here. Uh, I would definitely add some type of striker because this fair serum rod is going to need a striker of some type, but you've got fire right here in addition to all the other uses of this bandana. So this is definitely something that I'm glad to add. Definitely check out Super SE for all their other stuff. I'm probably going to have some more content from them here in the future. But till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon. Thank you.